what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel so as you've seen casper is running but we've got some things we got to go over and talk about um i fired it up yesterday just because man i've been working on this thing in the rain cold and i just wanted to hear it run i didn't even have an upper radiator hose on it yesterday when i crunk it up and let it run um because that's been an achilles heel so let's take a look at this so here it is as you can see you got everything buttoned up but this right here has been the struggle um finding a hose because you got to remember this is mixed up boss and this comes straight up almost like a cleveland and then it's got the offset right here i've had two or three different hoses went to napa the ladies at the napa in stanley have bent over backwards helping me get uh this straightened out and the alternator belt which we'll talk about but anyways neighbor helped me out with this hose right here uh had one laying around i was able to cut it but one thing i want to talk about sometimes you run into this you can see how that swelled out right there this hose was the same size on both ends and if you get a situation where you need a hose that's got a bigger size on one and if it's close what you can do is take a a heat gun or a torch and just heat the end of the hose just to get it really pliable not enough to melt it and put some grease on the uh, uh, nipple itself and then slide it over it it will expand the rubber enough to make it work so that's just a little trick if you find yourself in a situation where you need a hose um i thought about running a flex hose but i'm not really a fan of those this looks a lot better looks like it's actually for this application minus that right there so moving over here um you can see got shroud got the uh, flex fan on it but the belt and the location of this bracket with these uh hammerhead performance engines heads this is out a little bit further than what it was on my Windsor engine and you see right here I've had to do some rigging to make this work I had an aluminum spacer right there and I've got washers right there any Ford fan or Ford fanatic knows that this is actually what's used right there as you can see the length is different so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it with the washers until I see if that belt stays on at 7200 RPMs. And if it's good, I'll take this over to DV's house, chuck it up in the lathe, and machine it to get it the right dimension for that right there. So that's not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> I also had to do a lot of rewiring here. The one thing about hot rods is they're never really finished. Um, to be honest, I don't like any of that. Uh, the wiring is old and I replaced what needed to be replaced, but I think eventually what I would like to do is take and mount the starter solenoid back there on the firewall and clean up all of this wiring right here because I think it just distracts from that. I mean, it's looking really good. Um, got my header evac tubes on. You can see it going down there and connecting. So yeah, I wanna tidy up the starter wiring and all of that stuff, but that's stuff that can be done at any point really. Uh, you can see this side here, header evac tube going down my goal for today which it's 
I don't even know what day it is, to be honest. I think it's the second. <clears throat> yeah, because I posted that other teaser video on the first, New Year's Day. Uh, the goal for today is get the exhaust put back on the truck, fabricate all of the pieces that you've seen in that one video, and get the front bumper on it, and hopefully get to drive this thing today. Uh, the fuel cells mounted in the back, everything works, so I got to get to work, and I'll update you here in a little bit. Well, eight hours later, uh, been working on this thing all day today, made some really good progress. I mean, I think we're headed in the right direction. Let's check out this exhaust. Uh, not too bad considering that it's done here in the driveway. Oh Lord, I'm getting old, but you can see it. Come back and it S's into the original exhaust not too bad worked out pretty good so i guess the thing that you've been waiting on the longest is to actually hear this thing run i mean it's turned out pretty good i think now mind you this thing has not been tuned other than the dyno so I'm gonna to have to go through all of the tuning. I don't even have my O2s hooked into the exhaust yet, but let's see what we got here. Come on, baby. So as you can see, this thing is rowdy. I mean, it revs like that. So I'm gonna go get cleaned up, change clothes, and then the first trip we're gonna make with the hood off, cause that is always the last thing I put on. I don't put the hood on until I know that we're good, but we're gonna drive this thing to the gas station cause it's thirsty. I think we put what, two gallons in it? Yeah. My buddy Josh is over there. So two gallons of gas, uh, and it ain't gonna last long. So like I said, I'm pretty excited about trying to tame these carburetors for the street because I've never done a set of dominators on the street. So I don't know how much different it's gonna be than say the 660s, but I still feel really confident about it. Um, I leaned out the idle mixture screws just a smidge and it seems to be running a whole lot better. It's not burning your eyes when you stand behind it. So that's a step in the right direction. So I'm gonna get cleaned up and we get ready to take this thing for a little drive. That thing is wild. The throttle is like so intense.
So you got to see Casper run and drive today. It's pretty awesome stuff, man. I tell you what, this has been two and a half years in the making. It's getting dark out here. I got to get all my junk tools put up. Just want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming along on this journey. And we're just getting started because you're going to get to see me doing tuning on the carburetors doing drivability seeing how much fuel mileage this thing gets i mean it's going to be pretty crazy stuff for 2023 and you're going to get to see it all got to give a huge shout out to greg brown hammerhead performance engines for making my dream come true of this engine with these cylinder heads uh phenomenal phenomenal man and uh howard's cams for the valve train that's in it Jessel, uh, Dynamic Racing, uh, Eric Hester of the M&E Engine Services. He did all of the machine work for me. This thing is ready to rock. I mean, it is, I can't wait. Uncle Tony, I feel bad for you, dude. I mean, it's going to be ugly, but hey, it's going to be fun. I mean, that C4, I don't know how long it's going to last. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to give a huge shout out to Harold Miller of Dynamic Racing Transmissions for all of the C4 parts in this thing. I mean, we're going to, this is going to be the ultimate torture test of a C4. I hope that it lives, but we'll see what happens. Uh, the only thing that we noticed, and you probably can't even see it on the test drive, is this uh, coolant hose right here or this fitting is leaking a little bit of water we noticed it at the gas station but that's about it you get to see it in its glory so until next time this is andy from unity motorsports garage i will catch you later